if you had to say what the best country in the world is off top, Ooh. what would you think that would be? Oh, man. Oh, that's something I'd have to really think about, uh, the best country. I feel like that might be a difficult question if you haven't been right, everywhere. Right, 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 right. You got to do some traveling around. You got to do, you gotta do and and some moving around, around, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because being stuck in the fishbowl, you ain't going to really see too much. Yeah, I think, uh, I think bro is getting ready to head out right now. What? So, bro, where you going now? Turkey's history, culture, and food so great? Let's find out. Well, I made it to Istanbul, Turkey. I've been waiting for this trip for a while and couldn't wait to explore the country where Europe meets Asia. Let's get this started. So I made it all the way to Cheers Vintage, right here in Istanbul, and man, man, man. Amazing place, even on the way here. You see the city is completely lit up. So we're gonna start out in Istanbul and get the day started tomorrow. You know, it's very, very late here. And uh, yeah, we'll do Cappadocia and a lot of other interesting places and surprises that's gonna be along the way. So uh, stay tuned. And as you know, the channel is also about indigenous and domestic music of the world. And uh, less than two hours, I found this and this cat said that he's gonna play something for me. But before I let you guys hear it, there's something important that you guys need to know. He hasn't played it in a while. And musicians know that the instrument has a soul. And when you don't play it in a while, it's like the instrument broke up with him. So he needs to tame the instrument to get that feeling back. So it sounds right and it sounds crisp. So he's gonna fine tune it and uh, the Balama will sound amazing just like this. Even though it was late, I just had to take a stroll around the city before getting tomorrow started. Random traveling black guy day two and right now I may go and uh, check out some of the mosque and get some food and basically just go around the city you know I uh, got in pretty late last night heard some beautiful music which you heard the segment yesterday and um yeah we're just gonna explore the town right now and I'm gonna show you guys how wonderful and how vast Istanbul really is let's go it was a lively morning and I decided to check out the town well, what do you know? It's the tricky ice cream man. After that, I walk by the Blue Mosque and the Hagia Sophia, but more on that later. Let's see. And now it's time to go get some food. Was going to earlier, but had a lot to do. Uh, I don't know, breakfast, lunch, brunch. It's all the same at this point. But uh, we saw some of the monuments that were from the Ottoman Empire. And now, now it's time to eat for real. As I walk through the city, I was told about a delicious breakfast spot called Mado. Bro, welcome to here. We will give you want something, uh, dessert, something drink you have here. Let's see what all the hype is about with this place. Here at Sultan Ahmed in the area by the train station at Mado, the restaurant for breakfast. And the breakfast is called Kawalta, which is a mix of things, which would be eggs, veggies, olives, you know, a whole bunch of stuff. I've been pretty hungry because I got a late start on my day. Uh, it's kind of cloudy out a little bit, but nonetheless, Gorgeous. So I am about to dig in and tell you how great this food is. Well, I hope it's great. I'm assuming it is. Let's find out. Mmm. Mmm. Those Turkish spices. Mmm. After breakfast, I quickly learned about the Egyptian obelisk of Theodosius. This monolithic structure was made by the order of the Egyptian pharaoh Thutmose III in 1450 BC. 
Later in the year 390, the Roman emperor ordered to transport the obelisk to the Hippodrome of Constantinople and allegedly had it cut into three pieces for easy transportation. And what you can see behind me is an obelisk that was set from the 18th century dynasty. Amazing what you can find in different places in the world, huh? Wow, such fascinating history. Exploring the area a bit more, I ran across some delicious desserts, then decided to continue on to the bazaar, which is a market. People wearing traditional garb and, you know, buying all sorts of items and souvenirs. So this is the place you want to come to if you just want to buy something. Afterwards, I was shown a cemetery where I saw the gravesite of Zia Gokap, who was a famous Turkish sociologist, writer, poet, and politician. And I'm also gonna go back to the Hagia Sophia to show you guys exactly what it looks like around the mosque. As I passed by the mosque and marveled at Istanbul's sheer beauty, I was told to check out the famous Grand Bazaar marketplace. But then, something random happened. Got something crazy for y'all. Do you guys know the name Nerset? Well, if you don't know, here is a hint. Yeah, the guy from Instagram, TikTok, all the social medias. His main restaurant is right here. He's not here right now. He's actually in the US and I'm in his country, but uh, he's in an area called Bezit. And yeah, his restaurant's here. So if you come, you gotta check it out. I got an interesting fact about the Hagia Sophia while exploring the city. So I'll throw it back to myself. So I'm back at the Hagia Sophia, which is right behind me. And an interesting fact, this used to be a Christian church up until the year 1453, until Fatih Sultan Medman Han took over. And now it is a Muslim mosque. The day was winding down and I was told by my new friend Ali that he was going to a hookah bar. Especially because it was during Ramadan, I was very excited to check it out. And right now my friend Ali took me to a place called Methodism, where we are celebrating Ramadan and we just had one of their traditional meals and no real photos there because it's supposed to be a time where you just eat and enjoy the company of complete strangers, but it's like family. And right now we are about to smoke some hookah. So I'm excited to do this on Ramadan and celebrate with complete strangers. Let's go. Ramadan, Islam's holy month of fasting, has been observed and celebrated by Muslims around the world for more than 14 centuries. In the 7th century, Prophet Muhammad stated that Islam is built upon five pillars and that fasting in Ramadan was one of them. Today, nearly a quarter of the world's population mark or observe the fast during daylight hours, giving great respect to the Islamic month in which the Holy Book of Islam, the Quran, was revealed to the Prophet. Ah, uh, day three. Beautiful day. The sun is out. Seagulls are grabbing up their food and of course the cats dogs too so with today i think i will be going to the galata tower and also be checking out the asian side of turkey i decided to check out the galata tower today and was also told about many people fishing along the way the galata tower is one of the most magnificent sites in istanbul overlooking begulu and karakoy from its incredible location its colorful lights can be seen at night from all over the city, so it's one of the most famous tourist destinations among visitors in the city. The Galata Tower is visible to anyone who visits Istanbul and walks along with one of the city's most popular and oldest avenues, such as Taksim or Imanonu. Finally made it to the Galata Tower. You can see it's the tower right behind me. And wow, 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 it is incredible. How amazing was that? Once I was done, I decided to head to the Asian side of Turkey, crossing the Bosphorus. I uh, made it to the Asian side of Istanbul. Well, I'm about to go out and explore and probably get something to eat. I haven't really eaten all day, been on the move. So let's see the Asian side. Once I made it to the Asian side, the first thing I did was buy some orange juice. Then I walked to the Fenerbahce Stadium where one of their popular football clubs play. Afterwards, I walk by some young people dancing. Let's take a listen. It's always fun to watch something fresh and new. Well, it was time to head back to the European side. 
Bro just finished up, had some juice, walked around the Asian side of Istanbul, and now headed back to the European side to get ready for tomorrow. Heard some wonderful music out here. We saw a lot of amazing things. Uh, the views are incredible. I highly suggest you do yourself a favor, come this way. Remember when I said we would come back to the Hagia Sophia later? Well, let's check out the inside. I was actually giving the history on Hagia Sophia the other day, so what will happen inside is we will see people praying, you know, it's Ramadan, and I'll get a better understanding of what all of this is and what it means to them. I'm excited to see it, and I'm excited to show it to you guys, Travel House. Let's go. Built between the year 532 and the year 537, Hagia Sophia, meaning holy wisdom, represents a brilliant moment in Byzantine architecture and art. It was the principal church of the Byzantine Empire in its capital, Constantinople, later called Istanbul, and a mosque after the Ottoman Empire conquered the city in the year 1453. It was now time for shut eye because I was off to Kanakel tomorrow. Top of the morning. It's very early. It's oh, got the crows in the background. It's six in the morning to be exact. Just got up at around, I don't know, 4.30. Got everything together because I am headed to Chanakel, which is a city I don't know much about, but I heard it has a lot of history on Troy. I'm walking down the streets of Istanbul before the transportation's coming to pick me up and I will be headed that way. So this is about to be a long journey from that location and a lot more coming up. It was an early morning, but I was ecstatic about heading to the city of Kanakel. It's been about two hours and it'll be a five hour drive. So we have that one location and we have another one coming up. Stopping for breakfast and we're gonna move on. Moving along, we had close to a four hour van ride, but we had a delicious lunch along the way. And here we are. We have made it and we are here at Gallipoli. Uh, Canakel is actually on the other side, which we drove around from. But uh, Gallipoli, we were learning about the world wars between the British, who you know, obviously teamed up with the French and went at the Germans and the Turks. It was very, very interesting how everything happened and how they were supplied. Uh, they supplied weapons to them. They actually sunk a couple of their battleships when they came and attacked from the bottom. Right now, I'm going to show you the ocean side and how beautiful these views are. Stunning isn't even the word. I know I say that quite often, but no, I really, really mean it. Really mean it. This is stunning. Yeah. As I enjoyed the view, we quickly made our way to the Anzac Cove. The Anzac Cove landings were part of the Gallipoli campaign, an effort by the Commonwealth and by the French to remove Turkey from World War I. The troops were meant to land elsewhere, but were erroneously dropped at the Anzac Cove, which was a steep and difficult terrain. A lot of fascinating history, especially where the uh, Turks were up top and they had 30 to 40 troops shoot down in defense. And we're actually at a memorial right now, as you can see behind me, it's a lot of uh, headstones. Wow, such gorgeous views. One thing I can say about Turkey, there are loads and loads of rich history in this country. It seems that I'm learning something new every single day. I've studied quite a bit of Turkish history before coming here, but even getting a lot of the details of what happened through various wars, not just the Ottoman Empire and uh, World War, but uh, other things that have happened too. It's truly fascinating going from city to city and seeing what has happened and transpired through the annals of time with Turkish history. So once again, I encourage all those who haven't taken a trip uh, to not just Istanbul, but to all over Turkey, I encourage you guys to come and show up. This place is truly magical. Next up was Lone Pine. The Lone Pine operation was planned as a diversion to draw Turkish reserves away from a major British attack to be launched at the northern end of the Australian and New Zealand positions at Gallipoli. The Australians suffered more than 2,200 casualties at Lone Pine and the Turks over 5,000. We have officially moved on to the Battle of Lone Pine and uh, we were at another cemetery slash uh, memorial. I also just learned that in this area of Gallipoli are a lot of the people who passed from the war of World War I. Um, people from Morocco, Algeria, Senegal, Nepal, Sri Lanka, 
India, Australia. The interesting fact is there were no Americans fighting in Gallipoli, well, except one. One was actually from California, but became an Australian citizen and enlisted in the war when he was 21. So short time in Cali, moved to Australia. So just an interesting fact. Anzac Day, celebrated on the 25th of April, is the National Day of Commemoration of Australia and New Zealand for victims of the war and for recognition of the role of their armed forces. It marks the first major military action fought by Australian and New Zealand forces during the First World War. Wow, this whole area you see around me was a war zone by about 50 feet where the Isaacs and the Turks went to war and were so close they actually exchanged things when there was temporary truce, whether it's they had tobacco, or the others didn't have paper. Say, okay, throw us this, throw us that, or we'll throw you chocolate. And you could see the small craters around here from explosions from grenades. They said there were so many gun shells over here. What just tripping me out was how close they were to being able to run up on you like where you need a bayonet. No words for this. What an incredible day and one I won't soon forget. I'd highly recommend the Anzac Cove to history buffs and casual travelers. And we're headed back for the night. Get some rest, I am exhausted. I had a small detour back to Istanbul for the night before tomorrow's adventure. Top of the morning, so got the day started, went out, had a walk, early breakfast, and actually today we're gonna do Troy. So it was in reverse. We're gonna go see Troy in about an hour and get things started. So I'm gonna go get breakfast. And I guess people are still chilling, sleeping, doing their thing. So we're going to continue on. All the history I learned in my adolescent years couldn't prepare me for this moment. I was finally going to the city of Troy. Ah, uh, yes. We finally made it to the city of Troy. And here today we're going to learn about the Trojan horse in the back. Found out that the person who created this horse uh, had it done in 1975 and he saw a clay pot of the horse in Mykonos Island and uh, actually had it created. Let's learn some more. Troy is an ancient city and archaeological site in modern-day Turkey, but it is also famously the setting for the legendary Trojan War in Homer's epic poem Iliad and the Odyssey. In legend, the city of Troy was besieged for 10 years and eventually conquered by a Greek army led by King Agamemnon. Lastly, the city of Troy was wealthier than most for a very simple reason, location. Positioned alongside critical land and sea trade routes, Troy grew in successive stages for almost two millennia. Practically all tradable goods changed hands in Troy, but they were most famous for the horses that they bred, so much so that their prince and greatest warrior, Hector, was known by the epithet, Tamer of Horses. Wow, what a location. I mean, learning everything we learned as an adolescent, to seeing and hearing the stories of Homer, who, as they say, could have been one person, could have been multiple people. Oh, or the theory of the Trojan horse coming in between the Greeks and the Romans. Uh, was it a theory? Did it really happen? Did they do as they say? But uh, it could have just been a metaphor, but fascinating things to actually just see this in person where, and whether the stories were true or not, it's cool to see it with your own eyes. Wow, that was really random and very cool at the same time. Just had some fighter jets just fly directly over me. Um, so, yeah, we're gonna move along and see if any other random type stuff continues to happen. I hope so. Now that was incredible. On a side note, the Troy Horse statue from the movie resides right here at the request of the Ministry of Culture and Tourism of the Republic of Turkey. I went a long ride, got some decent sleep. Yeah, it's been a wonderful day. I really enjoyed Troy. Like I said, there was a lot of history to be learned. I learned a lot as a kid and as I got older, but, um, Getting a lot more detailed information on Troy was pretty cool. And as for right now, we're going to the city of Ishmir in Ephesus, um, which will be about six hours away if Ephesus isn't that far, but Ishmir is six hours from Troy. So uh, yeah, I'll be on our way and we'll have a lot more things to show. Let's roll. After that wonderful experience, I was headed to the city of Sajuk for some more cultural surprises. Wee. Long, long day today. Yeah, so we just made it to Saluk. Right, about, I want to say 45 minutes ago. We were in Izmir for about roughly 40 minutes, which we'll get back to. But uh, yeah, we uh, went further down to Saluk, 
and uh, we came from Troy originally in the morning. So today was pretty much a transportation day. We're gonna go to Ephesus tomorrow to learn more about the Greek history that happened there. So I am extremely excited to show you. Yeah, and I'm really tired too. So gotta go get some food as usual. And then maybe see a little bit what uh, the city has tonight. You know, I'm gonna try to keep it easy. You know, I haven't really slept too much. Gotta try to keep myself together. So uh, see y'all tomorrow. And I must say this town is uh, quite lively, uh, quite a bit going on. I know they have a castle and everything going, so I might wanna check that out too. I decided to walk around the city of Saju and take it all in before eventually heading to bed. So we're the morning, uh, getting ready to go to Theseus right now for the uh, Greek and Roman history. Uh, actually, it was one of the better nights that I slept. Uh, it's been a beautiful morning out here, and I'm ready to get the day started, so uh, come on. When I woke up, I checked out the local markets, then headed off to the city of Ishmir. We made it to Ephesius. Uh, uh, through birds and serpents. It's really spiritual. They also say that this is where the Virgin Mary passed away on August 15th. Um, don't know the year. Uh, this is a very holy place. They also say the name Philadelphia got its name from here. The House of Virgin, located in a nature park between Ephesius and Sajuk, is believed to be the last residence of the Virgin Mary, Mother of Jesus. The dogma of the Assumption states that at the end of her life, the Blessed Virgin Mary was taken, body and soul, into heaven on August 15th. The peaceful site is sacred to both Christians and Muslims, and is visited by many tourists and pilgrims. Once we left, we began our journey to the famous city of Ephesius. This place is stunning. This is actually Ephesius. Um, we've actually made it to the third version of it. And I'm looking at the architecture and yeah, this is stunning. You guys gotta take a look. Ephesius was an ancient port city whose well-preserved ruins are in modern day Turkey. The city was once considered the most important Greek city and the most important trading center in the Mediterranean region. Throughout history, Ephesius survived multiple attacks and changed hands many times between conquerors. Today, the ruins of Ephesius are a favorite international and local tourist attraction. Whee. This place is incredible. We saw the goddess Nike. And of course it was a cat posing, hilarious. And one of the favorite Greek gods or demigods, Hercules, yeah, I saw Hercules. You know, you had to go and check that out. He's very popular in the States. Uh, shouts out to Xena, warrior princess too. The Library of Celsius in ancient Ephesius, located in Western Turkey, was a repository of over 12,000 scrolls and one of the most impressive buildings in the Roman Empire. Constructed in the second century CE, it was named after the city's former Roman governor. The interior of the library and its contents were destroyed in a fire that resulted either from an earthquake or a Gothic invasion in the year 262 CE and by an earthquake in the 10th or 11th century. It lay in ruins for centuries until it was re-erected by archaeologists between the year 1970 and 1978. And now I was off to check out the Great Theater of Ephesus. Absolutely stunning. Wow, like this is the theater. Check this out, everyone. What? That many people to see. The Great Theater of Ephesus is a splendidly preserved and very impressive building. This structure, built of marble, has a width of 145 meters, and its audience once reached up to 30 meters. In its heyday, it could accommodate up to 24,000 spectators. Wow, this truly felt like I was back in time. Well, it was time for another random surprise, a runway model show. today. Very excited to show you guys this at the very early morning. Uh, Pamakali is where they have the carbon and minerals that are left by flowing through thermal spring water. And I cannot wait to show you what this looks like. Pamakale was next on the list. Pamakale, meaning Cotton Castle in Turkish, is a natural site in Denizli province in southwestern Turkey. 
The area is famous for a carbonate mineral left by the flowing of thermal spring water. Yeah, so made it chemically, and it is gorgeous. We see where the water is running out from and the minerals, and uh, they say the water, you, it actually helps with psoriasis and eczema. So people who have that might want to check out uh, this area. And I don't know, that look, kind of looks like, I think it's what, MacArthur Park from LA? Like they just dropped it off right here in Pomacoli. Hey. Here I discovered the famous Cleopatra's pool at the Pomacale Hot Springs. For nearly a thousand years, people have been coming to this region to soak in the unique champagne waters. After meeting these two cool gentlemen from India, I was headed to my final destination, Cappadocia. Wow, another day, another day. Uh, I think today we're gonna check out the church caves. The caves of the Christian religion actually lived and hid out when they were going to you know, the Roman Empire and uh, we'll see where they had uh, a church where people would actually live and go pray there. And it was a whole civilization. I found that fascinating. So they just uh, change up, get some food and uh, get that going. It'll be a tame day. I try to get the last surprise, which most people know what happens in Cappadocia, but the weather has to cooperate, so we will see. The first stop was checking out a popular pottery shop. My personal favorite was the porcelain pitcher, which was used to pour wine over 4,000 years ago and 2,000 years ago BC. The cool part is we got to see a master at ceramics. He was truly talented. It was time to explore the ancient town for a while, but you already know what time it was. Lunchtime. Stand by for lunch at Old Cappadocia, and I'm about to check out one of their kebabs. I'm generally in vegetarian right now, or pescatarian most of the time, but wanted to check out what this restaurant had and uh, give it a try. Let's see. Mmm, mmm. That's good. I just had to gaze at this beautiful view overlooking the city before it was time for an exciting morning. Well, we've made it. Finally made it. After a couple days delay, we are here at the hot air balloon ride in Cappadocia. I'm very excited to do this. I've been waiting to show you guys this travel house for a while. Like I said, this is my last chance to do it. And thankfully, the opportunity happened. So look behind me. Wow, let's do it. One of the reasons Cappadocia is so popular for hot air ballooning is because balloons here are allowed to descend so low to the ground during flight due to the lack of wildlife. This means you get to experience the full scope of the landscape both up close and far above. The first balloon flights in Cappadocia took place in 1989 with two hot air balloons that Robinson Lodge Hotel imported. These flights were just for advertisement and promotions, not for fun and the pilots' names were Khalil Kidner and Lars Eric Moore. These flights were forbidden for foreigners to fly a balloon alone, and in 1990, flights were suspended for a short period of time. Meanwhile, these two pilots formed a company with a local partner, Omir Toussaint. It was the first private and commercial company in the region. The first World Air Games were held in Cappadocia in 1997. After this organization, ballooning improved and became the symbol of the region. With the increased numbers in the last 20 years, there are 20 hot air balloon companies and over 160 balloons in Cappadocia at this very moment. Well, it was time to spend my final night in Cappadocia. Then it was back to Istanbul. What an incredibly stunning trip this was, and I'd like to thank Ali, Kadir, Sino, Rustem, and everyone else who made this an amazing journey. Unfortunately, I've reached the end of my trip. And of course, I always give five facts about the country I'm in. So here's five facts on Turkey. Fact one, Istanbul lives on two continents. The city is separated by a Bosphorus and thus consists of a European and Asian part. 97% of the country is on the Asian side and only 3% is on the European side. Fact two, Ankara, not Istanbul, is the capital. Istanbul just happens to be the largest city. Fact three, Santa Claus was born in Patara, Turkey. Yes, Old Saint Nick, or better known to most of you as Santa Claus, was actually born in Patara, Turkey in and around 300 AD. 
Fact four, the name turquoise actually comes from Turkey. The mineral actually came to Europe via Turkey and is one of the oldest gemstones in history. They were also used first as amulets by the Turkish soldiers. And finally, fact five, Turkey is responsible for 75% of the world's hazelnut exports. Most of the world's hazelnuts grow in the Mediterranean basin in Turkey, Greece, Italy, and Spain. Italy is the second largest producer at 20%, and the nuts are commonly used in a lot of Turkish desserts, like baklava. Well, all in all, I thoroughly enjoyed this trip to Turkey. It was an eye-opening experience. A lot of historical facts here, such rich history in this country. I would definitely recommend, historian or not, to come and check out Turkey. This is one of those countries that I think is really for anyone. There are a lot of historical monuments. If you just want to chill on a beautiful beach, if you want to go on an amazing hiking trail, Turkey is one of those countries that truly has it all. And I implore all to come and take a trip. Well, as you know, I have a plane to catch every Everybody. Can't be late for that. See you next time, Travel House. Take care. I'd like to thank everybody for watching. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe.